is Monday morning. We're gonna talk about some manga and I am so excited. Like I just feel especially excited for today's video just because I want to talk about some manga today. Hello friends! Happy Monday! So very excited that you're here. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of different manga licenses because this past Friday Viz Media had 26 manga licenses that they announced. No, I am not covering all of that. I am just covering the ones that I personally am most excited for and most interested as well as the shoujo manga because we got to give some shoujo manga some love because there were only three out of the 26 that were manga licenses or shoujo manga licenses specifically. <sighs> I shouldn't feel super sad but I felt really sad to know when you hear the numbers. But anyway, we're here talking about happy things, lots of excitement for today's video. But before we even dive into the manga licenses and whatnot, I want to give a special shout out, special feature to Shoujo Sunday. They are a podcast run by Chika and Gina, wonderful, beautiful ladies. I have loved getting to know both of them. They, yes, run this Shoujo podcast and they do a variety of different animes and stuff like they've done My Happy Marriage. They did do House Moving Castle, which I technically know, or no, it's technically not Shoujo, but House Moving Castle's peak and I was excited to see that they did a feature on it. They also do, they have a Patreon and I know they do special shonen stuff for Patreon members. If you're interested, I will leave a link down to that below as well as everything I'm going to feature today. And the reason I am mentioning these wonderful ladies is because Shoujo Sunday was actually nominated in, I think it's the Signal Award, I think is what it's called. They are running up some big names and they themselves are big in my opinion. Like they are incredible. And so if you could, if you're interested and want to further the show, agenda and support these wonderful ladies please go vote for them in this award I forgot to mark when this like the voting ends I think we have at least two weeks but it's better to get that vote in early boost them up because they deserve this win so incredibly much I would highly recommend checking out their podcast go subscribe to them go support them and I hope that you'll give them a vote now we'll go into the manga licenses sort of because I knew y'all I knew for the first thing I want to mention one of my biggest wins wasn't even on Friday okay? Magical Girl Dandelion. I know I mentioned this in some other video. Y'all, it's on Viz Media. You need to pause this video. You need to stop this video. I want you to go to Viz Media. I want you to go read this new Magical Girl manga that came out. It is so good. Again, pause this video. Go read those first three chapters. Beautiful, action-packed, incredible. Like, honestly, this was the number one win for me that came out of the licenses. This is going to be getting new chapters on the Viz Media app. So not a physical license yet, but Lord willing we are going to get a physical license for this please go like it go read it go support it the creator is amazing and these first three chapters were everything magic night rare earth has been my number one favorite magical girl manga magical girl dandelion is the number one now there's a little bit of everything you have some horror if you've been looking for some horror this month you got a little bit of that you have a whole bunch of heart a really great friendship dynamic no romance here it is about our young girl here who lost her parents at a young age she's living with her grandfather and in this world you have magical girls and fiends sort of like demons I guess you would say and they are constantly at battle but there's one guy one fiend who his name is Shade and he is a wonderful friend to our female lead and I I love them I love them both and that's all I'm going to say about it because I don't want to give too many spoilers but these first three chapters were everything I never expected that I'd feel like so many strong emotions within these first three chapters like one page I'd be so excited like yes I'm cheering the next I'm gasping and then the next I'm wanting to cry I kid you not and shout out to my friends on discord we did a buddy read of this Thursday night it was the most wonderful thing so again if you haven't already pause this video go to this media or go to the this app go read this manga you will not regret it it is nothing like any magical girl manga I've read no I haven't read many but I feel like there's just something different about it when you compare it to magic night Ray earth or Tokyo Mew Mew or Sailor Moon there's something beautiful special about this series and I'm all here for it. This will not be the last time you hear me gush about this. Now if we want to go into the actual physical manga that I was excited for that Viz licensed, my number one win that I got to mark off my wish list is the new Twisted Wonderland manga. Yes, this is the one thing for sure I am picking up. I have been waiting for this for my house warning and for Jade and Floyd. I've been waiting for them because when I have taken quizzes of what Twisted Wonderland
hand dorm would you be in? I always get this one. I always get this one with Azul and I'm so gullible and I was like, poor me, but I, I feel at home with these guys. They're not my like, no, well, Jade is in my top five because I mentioned that in my top five shonen manga. Yes, I love these characters and I've seen so many spoilers, some of them accidental, many of them purposeful. And I really feel like this is the best Twisted Wonderland manga that's out right now. Like even with Savannah Claw, I've seen spoilers for that as well. And I just, I love this one and I really love you a lot. I feel like, I feel like he is the most relatable out of all the yous I've seen thus far. And just very, very excited that Viz Media gave us this. I really hope we get more Twisted Wonderland stuff in the future. The only other thing I know we don't have yet is I think it's like the guidebook and, or art, no, it's other art book because we got that coming in December. But I think it's like a guidebook of sorts. We don't have that. And then the four coma, but it doesn't have a physical release yet. And I really hope we get that because I've seen spoilers for that and I'm all here for that. Thank you, Viz Media, for feeding my Twisted Wonder loving heart. Like this was such a win and definitely will be pre-ordering this. Let's talk about the three shoujo manga licenses that we did get. For this first one, Girl Crush. This is a really, this isn't a disappointment. It's a disappointment in the sense this is not under the shoujo beat manga imprint. This is going to be under a Viz. I don't know if it's going to be like a Viz big or just under Viz, but it's a, it's a sad thing because a lot of shoujo lovers I saw online were so happy to get this manga. It is available on Comic Key if you're interested in checking it out and reading the first three chapters for free. I meant to do that before filming this video and I got sidetracked yesterday and did not do it unfortunately, but I do know it's about a young woman or two young women actually who both, one girl wants to be a K-pop idol star and this other girl is really influenced by that young woman and so they both decide to go into stardom to go be idols. That is the gist from what I've gathered of what this manga is about. I know Baka Updates gives it the sports tag and I don't really know why because it doesn't seem like there's anything sports related, but the art just looks incredible. And I definitely have heard that this does have very strong girl friendships. So if you're looking for that in a shoujo manga, this seems to be it. Don't be, I guess none of us be deceived that it's not under shoujo beat, <laughs> but we did get two though that are going to be under the shoujo beat imprint. The first one that they announced was Snow Angel. Interestingly enough, I thought this was pretty cool. This is actually a manga that ran in cheese and we don't get much of that from my understanding. I know like all of Ray Toma's work has been licensed or serialized in cheese, but to get a new one that is unrelated to that with or unrelated to her series was pretty cool. This seems like it's going to be a really hard hitting, heart hitting manga. I think I've saw people saying that it wrapped up recently, so I'm not sure if it has three volumes or four volumes, but it's about a young woman who has been taking care of her grandfather that has dementia and living with her family and she's just really feeling weighed down in the sense like I think she wants to support her family, but I got the impression that her grandma is not or like her, the women in her family are not being supportive of her, of her going after like trying to find a new job or go do things that she would like to do in her lifetime and they're just saying no. But it seems like one of her childhood friends comes back into her life, so I'm assuming childhood friends lovers maybe. <laughs> but her childhood friend comes back into her life and he sort of revives her in the sense of helping her to go chase after those dreams that she had and live a life again. As it seems very heart hitting when I hear the blurb and because Tumblr, uh, the Shoujo B Tumblr official, they do have like a longer blurb on their website. And I think they said this is going to be coming out in May of next year. Now, this was surprising to me. Yes. But the one that really shocked me that I had zero idea was the Demon Prince of Momochi House Succession. I didn't even know there was a sequel to the official Demon Prince of Momochi House series. No idea. I was like, there is a sequel because the shoujo licenses, they happened when I was on the road driving to pick up my kids from school. And so when I was trying to use my very slow data to see what would have been licensed, I thought that this was a box set online because I couldn't open the link to X to see what it was. And then when I came home, I'm like, it is a sequel? Also, if you really love the Demon Prince of Momochi House, you have a sequel coming, friend. I believe they said this one comes out in July of next year. I'm very curious. I didn't read all of the Demon Prince of Momochi House. I did not love it a lot, and I'm not remembering why I didn't super love it. The art was beautiful. I honestly feel like I need that manga a second chance because yeah, I'm like, I know I checked out all of it for my library, but I didn't finish it. And I don't remember why. I don't remember why. I do remember I read the ending. <laughs> I did read the ending. I remember the ending. It was a very impressive the ending. But when I saw that there was a sequel, I was like, yes, I would love to read the sequel to see where things went from the ending. So I, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this. But I feel like I need to read the mainstream 
series first so I could read the sequel. But I'm like, I want to know what happened after the ending. Because, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad, but I was, I really felt like if I was, like, reading the series as it released, that my heart would have been, like, broken and then put back together. So, yeah, I think this is a really huge win for Demon Prince of Momochi House fans. And I hope that a lot of people really, really like it. When it came to many of the shonen manga licenses, there wasn't much that caught my eye. I mean, yeah, there were some ones that sound really interesting, but the one that I felt like maybe I would pick up, at least that I thought was the most interesting to me personally, outside of Sword Island, of course, because I'm definitely getting that, that is Sumuki Ogami's Not So Ordinary Life. I think the cover of this looks very, very cute. It looks like it would be a very wholesome kind of story. And I thought it interesting, though, that like, it's about this young man at this school, and there's a bunch of supernatural creatures. Like, the girl on the cover is a wolf girl, and she looks so cute. She looks so cute. There's ogres, and there's like vampires, and yeah, other supernatural beings. And I know the... I believe it's the translator for this and she sets a very sweet story. She's really enjoying it. The last book that she recommended and shared about, I really ended up loving and that is when I talked about last month or yeah last week in my reading or Friday 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 in my reading wrap-up video the boy I love is now the jaded emperor or something along those lines but I really like that one and she translated it and so I actually want to try this out it's three volumes and ongoing and it seems really sweet and I did see somebody had it on their wish list and got it so I think I'm gonna give this one a chance summer 2025 we'll see because I, my manga budget is like exploding right now <laughs> so I'm having to be like super duper strict so those are the viz manga licenses that I personally was excited for interested and wanted to share with you guys. I think for the shoujo manga licenses outside of the Demon Prince of Emochi House, I'm most excited for that one. And then I would say the Girl Crush because the cover, the art just looks so beautiful. And Snow Angel, I would love to read that one, but it's one I'd rather check out from my library because I need to know how heartbreaking that first volume is. For this next bit, I felt like a clown because if you watched last week's manga news, I did a shoujo manga leak. I'm saying leak because it was up on Barnes and Nobles already for pre-order as well as Amazon. But I was like, I mentioned that this publisher doesn't usually announce things until very short notice. What did they do that Monday? They do an official announcement through Anime News Network. I said, okay, I see you One Piece books. I won't do that again. I won't do that again. So if you're curious about what manga it was, it was Tepeki Honeymoon Volume 1. And yes, they even did share the official cover art as well. And I said, okay, I, I feel pretty silly. I feel pretty silly. I guess I would say acquaintances or friends with the, I'm not sure if she's a translator or the letter, but she has been sharing updates of how she really enjoyed working on this series. And I'm even more excited because I was already excited, but then I saw her thoughts. Yeah. I was like, I've already wanted to pre-order it. Shout out to my friend Selwan, who also told me about this news. They did have other manga licenses. I don't remember what they were, though. I realized I only focused on Tepeki on Honeymoon. So if you're interested in seeing what else One Piece books announced, definitely check out the link down below, because I, I know this was the only shoujo one. It was the one I was most curious about. And yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, friends, that I didn't come in clutch on that one. But Tepeki Honeymoon, Anime News Network came in clutch and gave us the official manga cover and the official confirmation that One Piece books did in fact license this eight volume shoujo manga series. Now, it wasn't just Viz Media that had manga licenses last week. J Novel Club also did, or J Novel, I should say. I'm only going to feature one. There were a few different titles I was interested in, and I was so heartbroken to find out they were light novels. I should say heartbroken. They're digital, and I don't have a digital e reader, so unless it gets physically published, I know I will not be checking out any digital light novels online because I don't mind reading manga online, but I don't like reading like novels anymore online. But anyway, the manga that I I was most interested in that they licensed last week was Jeanette the genius defying my evil stepmother by starting a business with my ride or die fiance. Y'all that ride or die fiance it is what sold me on this manga and I did check and confirm there is a light novel two volumes but this one specifically that was licensed is a manga. It just sounds fun y'all I mean that's all it is. I love the premise of oh I don't love the premise of that she is a stepmother that's basically outcasted her made fun of her in high society and so now she's been kicked out of her house and she has nowhere to go and she she, I think was going to break up with her fiance and her he's like no nah, I'm not going to go nowhere I want to be with you in fact I'll help you get back your father's corporation I said oh I am sold I'm here for it I'm very very curious it sounds like it's going to be a fun story so that was what I was most interested in from J Novel it sounds like a lot of fun they did have quite a few shoujo definitely check that out I'm not really sure where you can go to see what they license because similar to One Piece books they don't often promote their new licenses which is 
frustrating because I'm like, I want to see, but I know that this account that I'm sharing about this information, they did do screenshots from their Twitch stream of when they did this, showcasing everything that they had licensed that day. And of course, Seven Seas also did some manga licenses this past week. I know they did a Steamship title because I was at the dentist when I was looking and I was like, you know, if I read Steamship, I would actively pick up this title, but I'm pretty nervous to check out any Steamship after I checked out one at the bookstore and I said, oh, I don't think this is for me. This is very spicy. And so I love the premise though and or at least the cover of the steamship title it's the villainous something I believe it here it just looks gorgeous and I'm like I will just appreciate it from afar and just gonna live through other people's love though and really hope that people enjoy this enjoy this one but when it came to shoujo manga and the one that I was I'm curious about it's called Catman it seems interesting I don't know if I said it, but it is a one-shot manga it talks about this prejudice things that have been done to him because he is different I did re-read <laughs> the first chapter on Pixfy because it was on there. You can go look at the first chapter for free. I really like the art a lot. And this is one, it's not high on my radar, but I feel like it's going to have very important discussions and topics and themes that I'm here for. So I'm hoping that my budget allows, I don't feel like this is something my library would probably get because they get more of the like popular shoujo and shonen titles. But this one, I, I'm very curious. This is not one I want to cast off just because it seems sort of odd was my first thought and different, but I feel like because it is different and because it has like so those conversations I'm very interested in seeing what's being shared what's being said because it feels like it's something that's going to make you think and I'm 100% here for it and really glad that Seven Seas licensed this manga. Now this wasn't necessarily a new license for this but I do want to feature it because a few I think it's been a few months a few weeks I mentioned the Tyrant's Etiquette Tutor that it was on Kickstarter unfortunately it did not get fully funded but the publisher came in clutch they have a plan B if you back the campaign and you were like man I really wanted that the plan B that the publisher is doing is they actually have a hundred box sets that were from that Kickstarter, like going to be in that Kickstarter. They have them for sale on their website. They are $95 each with $30 for shipping. You don't get all of the cool goodies that they had in the Kickstarter that they were doing, like the acrylic standy, the bookmark, the washi tape, all of those things. You won't be able to get that, but you still could get the special limited edition of the box set. I think that is so genius and love that they had a backup plan and could still offer this box set to everybody who was interested. So if you are interested, and I said we're bummed that the Kickstarter didn't get fully funded. Go check out their website. I will leave the link down below and you can go ahead and pre-order it. When I checked this morning, they still had box sets available. Again, there was only a hundred that they're going to be selling. I don't know how high or low that number is at this point, but I can say as of filming this video as of this morning, they did still have some available. So definitely if you're interested, go check it out ASAP so you can go snag your box set. For this next little bit, let's talk about Nina the Starry Bride. So Nina the Starry Bride, it is coming, I believe this upcoming Tuesday, the 8th is when it officially premieres but I thought really cool that before that K-Manga actually did an announcement saying they are going to be putting the newest chapters as they release in Japan they're going to be putting them on K-Manga so if you want to stay up with Nina actively it's going to be on K-Manga they have put the latest chapter on there but not only that if you don't you know if K-Manga is not available in your country and with the anime coming you're like I really want to check it out but I don't want to pay the money Kodansha has your back friend so on their website if you make an account with Kodansha you can read the first three volumes that chapter Chapters, the first three volumes of Nina for free. This is available, they say, until the 28th of October. All you do, at least as of filming this video, you go to Kodansha's website. If you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see, it's going to say read volumes one through three for free. And you're going to see a shonen title here. It's the Reincarnated Appraisal Skill, Rise of the World. I messed that title up, my bad. I know a friend that loves it. I'm so sorry if they're watching this. And then next to it, you're going to see Nina the Starry Bright. And all you have to do is when I did it this morning, I logged in because it's just like a reader portal. And you just click on that button, read, and it will auto automatically take you to Nina the Starry Bride and you can actively start reading it. I went through almost seeing a volume one and I don't know if like afterwards, I'm assuming it'll just take you right in to the second volume. So if you want to check it out before the anime, this is a great way to see what you will think and if you want to commit to it because again, the eighth or the seventh, because I'm a little bit confused, this is really cool. It is getting an active dub alongside the sub when it premieres. So if you're like, I want to really watch Nina the Starry Bride, but I want it dub the opening day that Monday Crunchyroll said that this dub will be available for everybody to watch same day dubs feels like a big deal for a shoujo jose I mean it's jose but we'll say shoujo jose anime whoa that's really cool I unfortunately I do not watch 
any dubs. So I don't know who these voice actors are, but I did see a lot of excitement for both of them. So I hope it's going to be really, really good. I hope it will just be an amazing premiere and does very, very well. One other English manga that I want to talk about before we go to the, some Japanese manga news that I definitely wanted to feature is Tokyo Pop recently revealed the cover for the Margrave's Daughter in the Enemy Prince. Y'all, I love this cover. This is one of my favorite covers from Tokyo Pop that I've seen. And I think it's just because of the text. I love the title font that they use and how they did the coloring and how they have the little bit with the little heart with the sword going through it in the crown. It just looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. I had a comment or a share when I did the manga news video, let's say manga announcement, but I did the manga news video announcing the different Tokyo Pop titles that we got. And I was saying or I mentioned I was a little unsure about this one. So Jose manga though, I had a very sweet commenter who left me a really long comment gushing about how much they love this and why I need to give it a chance. And that person sold me on this. So I am very curious, very interested in checking this out. I've heard really good things about it and the cover, it looks really good. So I'm even more excited when the cover's good and you hear good things about it. You know what I mean? Now let's go ahead and talk about some Japanese manga news. So unfortunately, the creator of Sam Chronicles unfortunately passed away earlier this year. And I'm very excited to share this little bit of news in the sense there is a memorial art book that is dedicated to her and it has a lot of her, I, I'm not sure if it's earlier works. This is a chronicle looking back 30 years since the debut. I'm assuming of her debut. There's illustrations and messages from 69 artists. There's gonna be five sample chapters and it's gonna have an introduction and commentary, 192 pages that are just dedicated to her works and how her works have impacted people. I did do a review of Sand Chronicles. You guys voted for it in my shoujo event. I'm so thankful you guys did. It's a very emotional, heartbreaking, heartfelt and hopeful series. I have tissues with you when you read that series. So if you would like to get this, I'm not sure where the pre-order link is, but you can check out this tweet. It says it's only included in the paper version. So if you want something that really is in honor of her memory and the stories of her impact and whatnot, please go check this out. I definitely am curious and interested myself to get it because I've only read Santa Chronicles, but it was a very impactful story. And I knew for sure I wanted to feature this because I never, I don't know if we'll ever get it in English, but I think it's something that needs to be shared because of, you know, just something to honor her, her life and her works. And that's not the only little bit of news that I saw in passing that I was thankful to find. So if you're like me and you missed the Yon of the Dawn art book that came out, you know, the 20th anniversary one, that one that was the art exhibit exclusively in Japan, and you couldn't go to Japan, guess what? It's back. The art book is officially up for pre-order on this site called Japan Resell. It seems legit. I looked into it this morning. You can buy it for 90 USD. Yes, it will ship to the United States because I also looked at that, but I think you need to note that for shipping alone, it's $58. So you're gonna be paying like 150 bucks for this Year of the Dawn art book. But if you really want it and you were super bummed that you missed out on it, this is a really good opportunity to get this art book brand new. And it's not just that, they have all of the art exhibit back on there. So they have the plushies, the acrylic standees, and quite a few other things that I saw on there. They're a little bit pricey. You pay a little bit of money, and I'm not sure how that compares to resellers who are selling it new on, say, like Japan eBay or, or any of those. I don't know. So definitely do some research, look around for it, and see what you find. But definitely go check this out if you want to get this art book. This is a really good chance to get it. Okay, friends, sorry. Coming back, I left my video for a minute because my son was leaving. He's going to, at the, at the day of filming this video, he's going to a birthday party. And I was like, Oh my goodness, I gotta go say goodbye. And I don't remember what I was saying before this. So I know I saw the Yom of the Dawn art book. If you want it, definitely go check it out. But do some research, look at other places, see where you can get this for the cheapest rate possible. But if you can't find it, then definitely know that this website has your back, especially if you want some of those Yom of the Dawn plushies because they look so cute and a few other things. They do have them on their website. And speaking of Yom of the Dawn, if you want some Yom of the Dawn goodies, so the latest Hatsuyume issue, I think it's issue 21, came out. It features chapter 263 of Yom of the Dawn, comes with with a Yon of the Dawn notebook that looks so cute. Look at this. There's exclusive illustrations in this notebook that have not been anywhere else. So if you have one, if you want this, go order the Haunted Tsuyume magazine. I told myself, no, I don't need it, but I need a notebook. I do need a notebook and I want a Yon of the Dawn one where it looks so cute and it looks so adorable. And Sensei is wonderful herself. She put up the image uh, from the notebook here where you can go, if you like to save it, keep it for personal use or just a 
admire it because it's beautiful and looks really, really good. And yeah, you can get yourself a notebook. Again, this is only with the physical. You can order this on CD Japan or Amazon Japan. I had to think about that for a second because that's usually where I go. If I want to order a magazine new and make sure, ensure that I get the pre-order goodie or get the exclusive goodie, I go on there. There is a chance though that Sugaruya will have the used magazine at some point, but you never know. You might find it new because I did find this one brand new because I wanted it for my, my delinquents here. You might find the magazine brand new because I was really excited that I did for this one. Grand, this one didn't come with any exclusive goodies. I just wanted it for the cover alone. And now for the last little bit here that I want to talk about some free things. Now you won't get anything free per se, but you could get something for free because Seven Seas is celebrating their 20th anniversary and they said they're going all out with daily giveaways and that has been true thus far that they have had daily giveaways. One of them I know you could enter to win a paperback of your choice. I forget what day two was. If you're interested in winning, potentially winning some giveaways, definitely go check out Seven Seas, at least on X and Instagram. I don't know about Facebook. Definitely go enter to hopefully win some free manga or free light novels. And since it is a brand new month, we have some October calendars. We sadly only have two that I was personally really excited for. The first one was Levin Yamada and they look so cute. I love all the spooky vibes here that are going on and not just with Yamada. So we have, you know, Loving Yamada, free mobile calendar, but also Nina the Starry Ride. We have a free mobile calendar as well. And everybody looks so cute here with the spooky vibes as well. I love both of them. I even saw somebody print out the Loving Yamada calendar and I was like, that is genius. That is genius and such a fun idea. So if you need a free October calendar, here you go, friends. And I hope there was a lots of exciting news. Again, we focus more on manga stuff. There is a few anime things that I'd like to talk about next week, but we'll see if anybody else has any like license announcements before the big con in two weeks, which I'm really excited for. But again, hopefully there was some exciting news in this one. I would love to hear, were there any licenses that you were super excited for from Viz or maybe from a different publisher? What are you looking forward to? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!